Welcome to Honor Talks for Mice in Melbourne 2022. And I'm really excited to have a very special guest with me, Professor Chahan. Hi. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. So I guess I wanted to start off by yeah, just learning a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, how, like, what do you do? What's your day to day? And how did you end up here? Well, I'm a scientist, you know, as, as you know, I'm a, I studied chemistry, physical chemistry, and somehow I tumbled into coffee, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And this coffee is such a fantastic science. To make it short, I just got caught into the coffee science and today I'm a coffee scientist. So what draws you to coffee? Initially, really it was the aroma, you know, the science of the aroma and all the chemistry behind that was really my first field. And I didn't really enter specialty coffee initially. I started to work on ready to drink, on capsule systems and instant coffee. These were my type of coffees that I worked on. But then something like 14 years ago, I started to get in touch with specialty coffee. And that's where I started to study the quality in a much more different, and much more elaborate way. So can you tell me about what you're currently doing at Zurich University of Applied Science? Yes, so uh, in at Zurich we have a, a coffee excellence center that I founded in 2008 and since then, since then we're building up, we're increasing and we're doing research. Research on everything along the whole value chain. We do research on green coffee in origin countries, we do research on trade, on roasting, grinding, extraction, sensory and uh, also sustainability. So we really do research on the whole value chain of coffee and, uh, and do that with a lot of an uh, analytical tools. So we do a lot of measurements. Our approach is really to have an objective approach to coffee. So within that measurement sort of space for coffee, I guess the deeper you go, the more complicated and the more, I guess, you unpeel layers of coffee. So yeah. um, I guess I wanted to start off by um, getting you to just explain to people what the difference is between volatile and dissolved compounds and how you think about them, how you measure them and why they're important. Yes. So coffee is prepared by extracting a ground coffee with hot water or also cold now more and more. So essentially you are only interested in the fraction that dissolves. So that's what you start for. So there's a, there's a soluble part, but this soluble part is different between volatiles and non-volatiles. The volatiles really make a fraction of a percent. It's a very small part, the volatiles, but that's what makes the smell. And for that, we have different techniques. So we speak about the volatiles because it's so important. The smell of coffee is very important to quality. Then there's all the non-volatiles, which are participating and contributing to the taste of coffee and the texture. That's why we differentiate between the volatiles, which is the smell, and the non-volatiles, which is more the texture and the taste. So with volatile aroma compounds, I guess we don't, in specialty coffee outside the science world um, measure these so much. So I guess, how do you see their role in the customer's experience of a coffee? Yes, it's true that um, when you look into the specialty field and you talk about brewing, we have this very famous brewing chart and the brewing chart really only considers the non-volatiles. It has a TDS and the yield and that's all only non-volatiles and it has been really neglected. Mm. In, the, in the community, also because it's more difficult to measure volatiles. But volatiles is so important because the smell of coffee is so fundamentally important and this has been neglected. One side because the brewing chart is misleading and second because it's need a little bit more tools, more complex tools. And now we're going into it we're discovering that it's just really important to include it if you understand mm, the coffee. Absolutely. So this brings us to something very, very, very exciting, um, extract chilling. Can you tell everybody what extract chilling is? Yes, yeah, so a lot of people are focusing on how to optimize improved extraction process per se. And we have done a lot of research on that. But we have somehow neglected the fact that after you have extracted, there is still something happening with the coffee. The coffee is going from the spout to the cup. And we have actually quite a lot of losses in this trajectory, in this time. And extract chilling is about preserving whatever has been extracted and not losing it. Mm. By extracting the extract, uh, by chilling the extract, you allow to reduce the loss essentially. So you reduce the loss and that's what is the chilling of the extract. So you're saying temperature plays a huge role 
in volatile compounds. Can you yes. tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, so when you talk about extraction, people uh, experiment a lot with the temperature of the extracting water. The water comes in, 90, 93, 96 degree. That's how we started, you know, we thought that's what's really important. But once you go out of the spout, the temperature of, your, of the extract flowing down is also very important. If you cool that down, you reduce the loss. And that's the essence of extract chilling. You cool down. But you don't have to cool down the whole extract, only the first few milliliters or grams, because that's where a lot of aroma are con uh, contained in the extract. Mm. And so extract chilling is about cooling the first few seconds of your extract coming out of the spout so that you don't feel really temperature change in the cup. So you're still drinking a warm coffee, but with yeah. more volatile compounds. You hardly perceive a difference really, you know, and mm. uh, at least uh, for me. So. How did extract chilling come about? Can you tell me a bit about the story of that? Yeah, it's actually a lot like in science. You start with an idea and then it evolves and then suddenly you discover something. Really research started uh, in 2017 with the question whether the temperature of extraction water, the water that extracts your coffee, has a role in the cup quality. And from a sensory perspective, we see that. We see that the quality in the cup changes if you come with 96 versus 90 degree Celsius water. But we didn't understand why that was. So we're trying, we're trying exploring the chemical background of this sensory difference. We didn't find it until we realized, and this came a lot with the discussion with Sasha and with people at ONA, we realized that the phenomenon is actually after extraction. And that's where we, our collaboration really intensified and we really focused on this aspect of cooling the extract. And once Sasha and you guys had confirmed that it really made a difference in the cup, that we started to focus on the research on this aspect. So it was a hypothesis initially, mm. which you confirmed from a sensory perspective. And then together we went, elaborated on this chemically and we discovered it's really that's where you have to cool. So can you tell me a little bit about how that looks to research a hypothesis like that? I guess, what are the testing look like for extract chilling? Yeah, so um, first of all, you have always to be open on when you do experiment on things that don't match your initial theory. And then suddenly you discover the new thing, you know, mm. and that was the, the way that we did it. And then, of course, we didn't really know initially how to implement it. And that's when you came with the ice rock idea, you know, to implement, because we don't want to, to affect extraction, only mm. after that we want to interact. And so I think the, the ice, ice rock idea was quite a genius to go because it really exemplifies the extract chilling concept. You, ex you chill the extract after extraction. Mm. And, uh, and now of course we're looking in ways to do it also in a more industrial way, perhaps. But uh, I think it's like a, a give, a take and give discussion you know, between you and us that we came uh, to realize what's happening mm, and absolutely. how to exploit it. So sort of that coming together of barista community and science community to create something that's... Yes, coming together, but at the same time, what you need are, are communities that have some overlap. So mm. we need baristas or people in the in the, in the craft era who understand science and we have to understand also the perspective of the barista so it needs actually not only coming together but it needs people who knows to bridge to the other side absolutely otherwise you will not be able to innovate so what role i guess do you see extract chilling playing in the future for coffee i believe it's a new era that we have now discovered together and if we look back we realize that it's actually used in different places in the industry, you know. Mm. So, for example, if you do industrial extraction, you extract the coffee, often you cool it down, you know, mm. not only for the aroma preservation, for stabilization. So it is actually intuitively has been used in the past. You know, it's not totally innovative, but it is in a way now the focus and the understanding and the interpretation is so clear that we can now work on it to improve it. So I think we're at the beginning. And there's so much more that can be done by exploring this new concept that uh, I think now it's 
up to us to improve the technology, but up to the community to experiment and to find really the, the improvements and the sweet, uh, sweet spot. So the Paragon Coffee Brewer, have you used this before? <laughs> we have not used the final version. We actually did a lot of experiments on a version that was very close in our lab. So we started a few weeks ago to do some experiments. We're going to show this also now soon at diff different places. But we haven't yet had the final, but something very close that we developed together with you and uh, which helped us to, uh, to replicate the phenomena. Well, I've got to say the differences for me personally from a sensory aspect are incredible. Uh, I can't see myself brewing filter coffee without one. So I want to just thank you for joining us, doing all this incredible work and collaboration. And I cannot wait to see your talk tonight for all the people in Melbourne. Thank you very much for all the help also.